using a three column process chart in algebra. And during this presentation, you will be introduced to a method of analyzing data using an innovative technique, the three column process chart. What is the objective of using the three column process chart? It's to use data to determine an equation, algebraic rule, or function that is consistent with that data. Here's the problem we're looking at first. The table shows the cost of renting roller baits for H hours. We're going to take this table and add a third column in between the input column and the output column. This is called a process column. And with the process column now in place, we start our analysis of the data by drawing arrows on the outside of the table. One set on the left or input side of the table, and then the other set on the right side or output side of the table. The next thing we do is calculate the differences at the arrow tips. Subtracting top from bottom, each one of the differences on the left is 1. And on the right side or output side, subtracting top from bottom, each one of the differences is 2.5. Then the next step is to take the right-hand value over the left-hand value, which for each difference is 2.5 over 1. Then we calculate the rate of change or slope by dividing 2.5 by 1, which is 2.5 for each difference. And these three identical rates of change, if we didn't know it already, prove to us that this relation or function is linear. Now we take this rate of change, 2.5, and move it over to the process column. And then we multiply the rate of change by the number in the input column 1. And then we add an unknown number. We put it here as a question mark. And this 2.5 times 1 plus the unknown number is equal to the output value, 7.5. 2.5 plus what number equals 7.5? Here it is written as the equation, 2.5 plus x equals 7.5. Then subtracting 2.5 from both sides of the equation, 2.5 minus 2.5 cancel each other. So x equals 7.5 minus 2.5, or x equals 5. So this 5 goes here. So here's the question mark replaced with the number 5. Next, we try the same rule or model for the input value of 2. And since 2 times 2.5 plus 5 equals 10, that checks out. And we try the same thing for input values of 3 and 4, just to be certain. And we see that they check out as well, showing us that our equation is C equals 2.5H plus 5. We're certain of it because we've tried it with all our input values and the rule worked to get us each one of our output values. Now we'll look at another situation. The table shows the elevation of a rock in feet after being thrown off a 500 foot cliff. We'll now convert this table into a three column process chart in order to evaluate. We draw the arrows on both sides of the table like we did in our earlier example. On the left, each input value is one unit apart. And on the right side, if we subtract top from bottom, as we did on the left side, we have negative 6, then negative 38, and finally negative 70. And those are the first differences. Since the first differences are not the same for each change in input value, the relation is not linear. So what we do next is go to our next test, second differences. So we draw arrows again from the first differences this time, and we calculate the second differences. Negative 38 minus negative 6 equals negative 32. And negative 70 minus negative 38 also equals negative 32. The second difference as being equal is the sine of a quadratic function or relation. And the quadratic coefficient is the second difference divided by 2. In this case, negative 32 divided by 2, which equals negative 16. So we start out the process column by taking negative 16 times the number of seconds squared. And we know that at a time of 0, the y-intercept is 500. So the process adds 500 in each place. And we don't know yet what the linear term is, so we'll place a question mark in the middle of the process column. Now we need to find the x, or linear term, and that's probably most easily done here at t equals 1 second, where we have the equation negative 16 plus x times 1 for t equals 1 second plus 500 equals 494. Combining like terms, that becomes x plus 484 equals 494. To solve for x, we subtract 484 from both sides of the equation. 484 minus 484 cancel on the left side of the equation. 
we bring down what's left, and that's x equals 10. So we plug it, 10, into our equations in our process column to see if it works. And since all these equations work out, we have our equation e equals negative 16t squared plus 10t plus 500. And that's determining a quadratic function using a three-column process chart. We'll look at our last problem. A biologist conducted a lab experiment involving the growth of a virulent strain of bac bacteria. Starting with four of the bacteria initially, she observed that the number of bacteria in the dish after one, two, and three hours and recorded her data in the table below. Write an equation that shows the number of bacteria B after H hours of growth in the lab. As we did earlier, we draw arrows between the input values on the left side of the table and likewise do the same thing on the right side of the table. On the left side, the units are 1 apart, and on the right side we have 12 minus 4 equals 8, and for the next difference, 36 minus 12 equals 24. And for the last difference, we have 108 minus 36 equals 72. Since these first differences are not equal, the relation is not linear. So now we go to the test for a quadratic relation, and that's done by evaluating second differences. And the first one is 24 minus 8 equals 16. And the next second difference is 72 minus 24 equals 48. And since the second differences are not equal, it's not quadratic. If it's not linear and it's not quadratic because it falls, fails the test for each one of these relations, but what kind of relation is it? We expand our table to a three column chart. As we go from one output value to the next, how can we make sense of it? Let's try dividing the bottom by the top. The first one is 12 over 4, the next one is 36 over 12, and the last one is 108 over 36. And the value of each of these quotients is 3. This analysis that each output value is consistently multiplied by a factor or another way of putting it, increased or decreased by the same percentage or proportion, that signifies an exponential relation. The rate of change is not the same, but the percentage change is the same. To find the function or rule to model the situation, we start with a y-intercept 4. Next, we take the constant factor we determined from our analysis of differences and multiply it by our starting point. In this case, it's the number 3, which is a constant multiplier or base of an exponent. And finally, what do we use our input value for? Well, we use it as an exponent to the constant multiplier, 3. And this will be 4 times 3 to the power of 0. Does this work? 3, or any non-zero number to the power of 0, is 1. So we have 4 times 1, which does equal our output value, 4. We try the same process with the input value of 1 and see that it works. And we see that it works for input values of 2 and 3 as well. So our rule or function is b equals 4 times 3 to the power of h, where b is the number of bacteria and h is the time from the beginning in hours. During this presentation, we've shown examples of using a three-column process chart to help us model a linear, a quadratic, and an exponential function or relation. Here is a menu of the different types of modeling that can be done with the data using my TI Inspire graphing calculator, and I frankly don't know how to use a three-column process chart to model relations other than linear, quadratic, or exponential. However, if I came upon a relation that couldn't be modeled using a linear, quadratic, or exponential relation, I would try others of these, plus their square root, absolute value, and other possibilities as well. I was first introduced to the three-column process chart by another teacher, Oswaldo, several years ago. I wanted to give him credit for this systematic method of understanding mathematical modeling of relations. I think he has made a fine contribution to the understanding of algebra. In my research on a three-column process chart, I have seen it used as a graphic demonstration technique, but Oswaldo is the first person I know of to use it as an analysis tool. This has been using a three-column process chart in algebra. Thanks for viewing.